What kind of photos do you make with a $13,000 lens? This is the Leica Noctilux 50mm f0.95 spherical. What did Leica engineer f0.95 to look like? Who buys this lens? You'll get the answers to these questions in this not-so-typical review of the Leica Noctilux 50mm f0.95. I will show you a lot of photos throughout the whole video to give you the best possible understanding and feeling about this lens, because that's what it's about, right? Of photos. Since this is not some ordinary lens, and so you've got a balanced view, I've asked other Noctilux owners for their perspectives on this lens as well. So, first, can the Noctilux look be explained? Some describe it as a glow, magical, dreamy but sharp, striking. Linford says it's got a signature look, and Phil M writes the lens can highlight one slice of reality whilst the background and foreground just melts away. My interpretation of the Noctilux look is a combination of the following. One, the sheer amount of bokeh you'll get at the 50mm focal length with an aperture of 0.95. Two, how the lens renders the recognizability of the out-of-focus areas. And three, how the lens rewards skilled choices made by the photographer. And we'll talk more about these skilled choices and how the Noctilux challenges you as a photographer towards the end. In a sense though, the look reminds me of some of the photos I've taken with my Hasselblad 500cm. One thing is clear. The Noctilux look is not simply about making the background becoming one smooth buttery plane like you would say with a 100mm shot at f2, but it does that and it does that very nicely. So, what are the image aesthetics like and how does it render? Noctilux is a rich lens in contrast and color, but it's not overly saturated. It has smooth tones and maintains contrast even when you shoot it into backlit scenarios. When photographing people, it renders skin and skin tones in a very pleasing manner. You can break that down into three points. One, the colors are accurate. There's also a sort of brilliance when the light is right on your subject. And two, when you're shooting at 0.95, even in contrasty lighting, the skin is smooth. And three, even though the skin is smooth, it still retains the ideal amount of detail. And this is a very important factor for people photographers, whether it's portraiture or wedding, street or everyday photographers. I would definitely not call this lens soft, not by a long shot. It's very sharp for such a ridiculous aperture, to be honest. But models and persons concerned about what they're skin looks like, well, they're not going to give you any grief at all. I know this is a bit woo-woo, but the Noctilux seems to handle your subjects with care. And that's more sentiment than anything else, but what are you going to do? The lens does vignette when shot wide open and, you know, as is expected, doesn't when you stop it down. But I mean, who wants to stop this puppy down? In terms of chromatic aberrations and purple fringing, the lens has a bit of a reputation for this. It's definitely there, especially wide open. You'll notice it in the bokeh too. Phil M, one of the other owners I wrote with who is not a pixel peeper, said he was very disappointed with how much purple fringing the lens actually showed. Since I stopped shooting weddings, it's something that I've paid a lot less attention to. Since doing this review, I notice it more and it is annoying. Although you shouldn't have to, you can correct it in post. To wrap up color though, in combination with a decent sensor with some good color science, which the Leica cameras and many cameras today have. The Noctilux produces raw files that are just a pleasure to edit. Let's get on to f0.95 and bokeh. Not the Noctilux look, just bokeh. At one meter focusing distance, the depth of field of the Noctilux is two centimeters, but even there, you already notice how it softens from the point of critical focus. Basically, if my iris is in focus, my eyelashes are already starting to blur. Aesthetically, it's a modern look. It's not busy, the depth of field roll off, for the lack of a better term, is effortless, and it results in a very buttery smooth background. Everyone I wrote with agrees that the amount of bokeh is more than you can shake a stick at and the way it renders there's just something distinct about it. I've read some statements online that you can get the same bokeh by taking a 100mm f.2 and I understand where these comparisons come from. Truth is a lot of photos taken with the Noctilux most don't even realize it's a like a 50mm shot at 0.95. Other than those of you with a keen eye, if you check out Instagram and search for a few Noctilux tags, how many of those photos couldn't have been an 85 1.4? Most will only see the difference of bokeh through comparison photos, where you've got the same photo at 1.4 and then one at 0.95, and that's me included, to be honest. But yes, you can blow out the background with a 100mm f2 as you would with the Noctilux, but make no mistake, 
it's not the same thing. You don't get the same coverage that you get with the wider 50 millimeter focal length. Sure, you can use the Brennizer method, I think that's how you call it. But even then, you don't get the same type of depth of field roll off. Nor do you get the kind of image quality that the Leica engineers have designed into this lens. So, 13,000 US dollars, what is that exactly? That's what this lens costs brand new. Whatever way you look at it, it is a stupendous amount of money. So for me, the key question to ask is not whether it's justifiable, but can and do you want to afford it? Putting that number into context means instead of buying this lens, you could buy a Leica M11 and a 50mm Summicron and have money to spare for the new Visiflex viewfinder and an extra battery, and you'll still have money for dinner. For two. Or if you're into film photography, you could buy and have developed 45,650 plus photos of Ilford HP5 plus film. At least according to the prices of my favorite film lab on earth, Carmen Cita Film Lab in Valencia. Shout out to you folks, that's a lot of photos. But if you do that, not a single one of those photos would have been taken with the Noctilux. So then, you know, there's that. Let's talk about its physical attributes. So build quality, you know, it's, it's pretty cheap. It feels kind of plasticky. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just kidding, of course, you know, it's top notch. It feels good. It's bloody heavy. It does not balance very well on M cameras when you compare it to the other lenses that are designed for that system. It balances better on the SL system with its grip and the fact that the SL cameras are heavier than the Ms. Coming from other Leica M lenses, the weight distribution of the Noctilux will just not win any awards. But coming from a Leica SL lens, like the one kilo 50 millimeter Summilux, the Nocti will feel a lot lighter. With this being a manual focus lens, the focus throw is a bit long for rangefinder users, used to shooting luxes and crons and relatively short for SLR users. You can go from one end of focus to the other in two tries, but if you hold the camera up to your face, it's two and some change. Of course, that's if you've got my size hands. The focus throw is shorter on the 0.95 than on the earlier F1 Noctiluxes though, so there's that to take into consideration. Focusing the Noctilux on a rangefinder is not as challenging as you would think. For the fact that it is a 0.95 lens, you will be surprised by how many keepers you actually have when you shoot it wide open. You will have more keepers with a camera which has an EVF like the SL2S, but in my case at least, I focus faster with the rangefinder on the M7 and the M9. Focusing with the Noctilux will not be as fast as with the Leica 35mm Somalux or the Zeiss 50mm Sonar because it doesn't have a tab or a knob. If you know if you use lenses with a tab and an extremely short focus throw for a while you develop muscle memory and this is not the case with the tabless Noctilux. The reason you'll slow down with the EVF though is because you can achieve critical focus and you will invariably keep adjusting for the micro changes in focus depth. Either you're swaying a tad and, you know, maybe your subject is too. Can you expect a different experience shooting the Noctilux on film versus digital? And I would say yes, you can. On a film, you can potentially get away with shots which are slightly out of focus, and that's because film is not as clinically flat as a digital sensor. And this is a great positive for film. Also, the lack of that clinical image in combination with the way the lens and the film deals with highlights, it produces a very interesting bouquet. You know, one could say almost magical. Also, the contrast between the out of focus areas versus in focus areas is quite stark. Earlier, I mentioned to you about this not being a soft lens, even wide open, and I think my wife's toes here illustrate this point exactly. By the way, folks, I hope this review is useful to you. You know, if you like it or if it helps you out, then a like or a comment or even both on the video, it goes a long way to help me out too. All right, what about shooting it at 0.95 in pure sunlight? Well, an unfortunate negative is the shutter speed limitation of the film M's, which is at 1 1,000 of a second. And same goes for the older digital M8, M9, and even the M10 model. You see, if you want to shoot at 0.95 in pure sunlight at ISO 100, then the max shutter speeds of these cameras won't do. Even the M8's 1 8,000 of a second is just a tad too little. You need to be at 1 16,000 at the very minimum to make it work and not worry too much about overexposure. You're going to have to buy a filter. The issue with the filter is the lens thread, which is an uncommon 60 millimeters. I've ended up buying the 16 times Leica ND filter part 13057. You might as well get it from the guys who designed the lens in the first place, right? The filter kind of brings out the vignetting a bit more, but what I find more unfortunate is actually the color cast that the filter creates. These very gray, cool tones, almost underexposing a bit. You'll need to shoot in raw to correct the color and the vignetting adequately. But on the other hand, you know, there's the novelty of shooting at 0.95 in the scorching sun. Now, is it the king of the night? 
according to Google, Noctilux means the light of the night. And yes, it is. It is an absolute monster in low light. I mean, let's be honest, 1.4 is already ridiculous if you really think about it. And when you combine it with what our cameras today are capable of in terms of high ISO and then, you know, some cameras like the SL series, which have five stops of image stabilization. I've said it before, that's basically night vision in the palm of your hands. Having said that, the sensors of today are light gathering monsters too. So the appeal of the Noctilux starts to shift. You see, it used to be look at what you can see in the dark in combination with today's modern sensors, the appeal of the Noctilux becomes more, look at how clean you can see in the dark. On the analog spectrum, Linford, one of the other Noctilux owners, correctly points out that with all this extra speed, this lens allows him a lot more flexibility when shooting film. So what if you wanted to adapt this lens to other cameras? Well, as long as you've got an EVF, you're fine. Ideally, it's a full frame camera to maximize the sensor coverage. It would be a shame on an APS-C, but not that it doesn't work. Many persons love the look on the Leica M8. If you want to adapt this lens to a medium format camera, like those from the Hasselblad X system or the Fuji GFX series, you will be disappointed. The image circle is designed for the 35 millimeter sensor and not above. You will have hard vignetting relatively soon and will need to crop so much that you lose the benefit of all that extra sensor real estate. Now on to a key question. Should you buy it? Mixbrick says he wouldn't recommend this lens to 99% of persons out there. 6-bit usually steers people to the Voigtlander Nocton when he recommends a 50mm for the M system. And personally, I cannot recommend for you to spend such a large amount of money on a lens. However, I've put together three types of personas for you who may buy such a lens. And maybe you find yourself in one or more of them. The first of that, Moneybags Jack. He's a serious hobbyist and who is ready to invest in a premium lens and appreciates the craftsmanship and the prestige of the Leica brand. For Jack, a $13,000 expense doesn't really make a difference to his bank account. He sees the alternatives, he may even have the alternatives, and he buys the Noctilux to have the king of them all and you know, see what the fuss is all about. The second person is Good Deal Neil. Neil is the kind of person who gets a deal which is just too good to refuse, in the sense that if he doesn't take it, he'll not get an opportunity like this again. He knows he'll be able to make his money back if he decides to sell it, and maybe even for a profit. I belong into that category. Mine is a secondhand copy I bought it about eight years ago for far less than secondhand market rates are today. The third person is Jill the Connoisseur. I didn't have a good rhyme for Jill. Maybe you've got one. Jill is a photography, possibly a Leica savant. Her understanding of this lens from a technical, a historical, and an engineering point of view is rivaled really only by the engineers at Leica and a handful of like-minded individuals. She may also be a collector and might even be looking for a very specific copy of the lens. Out of the three, this is the most likely person that will be able to tell the difference between the Noctilux 0.95 and the alternative lenses just by looking at the images alone. So, do you find yourself in any of these? Have I missed a persona or an angle? Let me know. As an interesting side note, Neutra mentioned to me that 80% of the frame prints he has on his walls are from the Noctilux and he said he will never sell his Nocti. What about the alternatives? A good list of alternatives are the Leica Noctilux 50mm f1, or the Leica Noctilux 50mm 1.2, or the reissue of that. I mean, these are still very expensive lenses, and they will give you a different look to the 0.95. Less expensive lenses to look at are the Voigtlander Nocton 50mm 1.2, the TT Artisan 50mm 0.95, and the Mythicon Zongi Speedmaster. I butchered that, I know. Um, the Mitikon Zongi Speedmaster 50mm 0.95. I find them all quite interesting in terms of the images that they produce, but I've not tested any of these lenses. You know, if you've got one and would like me to, then I'd be glad to. If you happen to be one of the manufacturers and want to send me one, well, why don't you? You can contact me via my website. Let's get on to how the Noctilux challenges you. So earlier I mentioned to you that the lens rewards skilled choices made by the photographer. Look, if it's simply about the bokeh, and the lens's ability to separate subject from background, even more than an aperture of 1.4 in the same focal length, you'll be knocking them out of the park just from the first few shots after you put this thing on your camera. The way it renders bokeh at 0.95 is just beautiful, and the wizards of Leica deserve a hats off for what they pulled off with this lens way back in 2008. If it's about low light, well, the way this lens finds light in a situation where you didn't think there was enough will surprise you every single time. If it's about the glow, however, the Noctilux look, 
Well, then this lens will challenge you. It's a lens that will kick your butt for a while. It's a lens that you need to shoot a lot. And I would go as far as to say that it puts your composition and photography skills up to the test, just in general. That is, if it's about the Noctilux look and getting all that you can get from a ridiculous aperture like 0.95. You want to have a good grasp of depth in your photography with foreground and background elements in addition to the actual subject that you're taking a photo of. At 0.95, you want to give the lens the opportunity to not simply isolate your subject, but to show off what it can do to the areas not in focus. For me, that's where a lot of the look is found, you know, in the varying depths or distances of bokeh in relation to your subject. Sixbit, who's owned this lens for five years now, says you want to shoot this lens wide open at mid-distance. And I think mid-distance, that's a key word right here. You want to be mindful of blowing out highlights in the background, which happens very quickly shooting at 0.95 on a sunny day or in even contrasty low light conditions indoors. You lose a lot of the look if there isn't enough detail in the highlights or shadows in the out of focus areas. And that's why this lens will challenge you. But if you accept that challenge and make headway, you will better understand the conditions to consistently make photos where it isn't just about the background that goes super blurry, but a photo that works in a way that only the Noctilux and a practice photographer can make it work. And if it only was that easy. Honestly, for me, it is hit and miss. Sometimes I think I've figured it out and then I just get a very bokeh style photo and, you know, still lovely, not complaining. That bokeh is gorgeous. And then at other times when all the elements align, I take a photo where I think, well, that's what all the Noctilux fans rave about. And that's why I haven't sold it yet. Character for days, I couldn't have done it with any other lens. That's a very cool moment. Which leaves the ultimate question. How many of these moments do you need to collect to say, yes, I won't afford myself this lens? A question which invariably only you can answer for yourself. To help you though, and add a little more color and contrast to that decision, you'll find all the responses from the persons I was in touch with on my site. The link is in the description below. A part two of this review is in the making where I walk through many more images made with this lens, similar to my best of 2022 video. You can check it out right there. Definitely subscribe and hit the bell icon so you see when it's out. Peace.